All right, now that I've got a little better understanding of how you are trading, I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to uh, use these indicators, this just, just this chart alone, to uh, try to get in on your scalping routine and when the momentum is going to help you to make those uh, two, or, two or three ticks. Now let's explain what we've got on the chart. First of all, this is very fast. It's one second. Now you know that the chart is too fast. Um, you're gonna. It, it, this is one second. You might want to go down to two seconds. And here's how you how you know if you're getting a lot of ticks on the chart that are not complete bars. All right. Every, every bar should have an open high, low, and close. If that's not happening, then you need to slow it down. So like over here, you can see you don't have full bars over here. So just use that as a, as a barometer. Uh, there we go. See, a lot of these are not full bars. Okay. So... Given that, I'm just going to go ahead and change it to two. This is two seconds. Okay, now it's better, all right? But we still have some over here that are just single, single lines. So two seconds still might be too fast. We go to three. And there's still some instances, but I'm just going to leave it at that. There's not, not a lot. Okay. But that's, that's the way you determine it. Now, so we've got a three-second chart here. We've got the premium in subgraph two, the TSC in three. We've got a CCX in subgraph for and this CCX is sitting on the ES. The next CCX is sitting on the premium. And then in our last subgraph, we have our momentum indicator. So at any particular time, you want to get agreement in your indicators. Now, the only reason why you've got the, the TSC here and you may not want it because it's not going to help you to trade the way you're trading. This is only good for divergence. All right. It's only good for divergence. You do not want to wait for, for the TSC to, uh, to pivot in order to trade in that direction. Don't do it. Don't use it for that purpose. And if you're at all inclined to look at the color as the basis for trading in a particular direction, then get rid of it because it's not going to give you the right information. But that having been said, you want to trade when your, your indicators are in agreement. Now, let's just talk about the two CSCs. There are two parts to the CSC. The slope and the zero line. The zero line is obviously where the colors change from green to cyan on an upslope. That's it's changing the zero line. When it changes from magenta to red going down, that's crossing the zero line. But you can see right in here, we're above the zero line as we are on the premium. Over here, we're below the zero line. That gives you a perspective on market direction. If you're above the zero line, you don't really want to trade short. There could be some instances where you would, but for your purposes, it may not be a, the best idea. So it's really that simple. So let's just look at this uh, situation in here. We're crossing the zero line. We're going up, 
all right? So when you're going up, the color of the bars are gonna be cyan. When you're above the zero line and it's magenta, you're either beginning to short or you're just in a little bit of a chop zone. But as soon as it starts turning up again, okay, that's that's the market direction. Here, as you can see, it's kind of going sideways. Then it starts going up again. Let the premium, generally speaking, let the premium give you the signal to reverse direction. It is a leading it is a leading indicator. And it ain't wrong. It leads the ES. So if you let the premium tell you, okay, I'm short in here. These three bars, that's short. Next bar is turning cyan. I'm long. Okay? I'm long. Now, I'm not. Here, I am. Okay? Okay. And that might be, you know, this setting could be just a little bit slow. I just noticed that was at 50. Let's just see what happens if it's at 25. Yeah, okay. Not too much of a difference here. But now these uh, two indicators are, are the same. So now we can really say that it's a leading indicator. And it is in many instances. So you use these for market direction. Now, what does the momentum indicator, the CFB, have to tell you? The best uh, first of all, whenever the CS, uh, whenever the CFB is cyan, that is momentum. When it is magenta, the momentum in whatever direction it might have been going is dropping off. It doesn't mean it can't be moving, but the momentum is dropping off. The best time to trade that momentum is when the cyan is either at or below this strong yellow line. So like in here, it's above. Now it can work, but it's better if it's below. Like in here. It's a little better that if it's if it starts turning when it's below that line. I'm not saying it can't work like it does right in here. Works very well. But your ideal situation is when it's below. Now, of course, I've been using this indicator. <laughs> Let me back up here for a minute. I typically don't put this indicator on a chart that's this fast. This is, of course, a one or three second chart. Let's see. That's no, no, I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree. Okay. All right, so again, below the, the yellow line, that's when it, it's going to probably work the best. So when it's changing direction, all right, going from magenta to cyan, that's when your momentum is, is building. Now, notice the impact that it has. Momentum has nothing to do with direction. It has only to do with momentum. So we're going down here, right? So we've got everything in agreement right in here. 
There's your premium, it's turning right there. Your momentum is also turning at the same time, but it's going down. Now, as it starts to go the other way, the market is going sideways. All the same, the premium and the ESCCS indicators are telling you what the direction is, although it's just not moving a lot in any particular direction. But now when it finally agrees, right here, tick number one, momentum is building and look what happens, boom. Now it's dropping off. We've all, we've, we've dropped, okay, to be sure we've dropped. And that could have been a, a you know real fine time to trade. You can trade the direction of when, when the CCX indicator is agreeing on both the premium and the, and the uh, ES, all right? You can still get good trades even though the momentum is dropping off here. You certainly made a good couple of points here off of just that trade. So it's not that it can't happen. It's just that when it is cyan, that's when there's actual momentum building. So even though here, this sh suggests that we could be going up once we get divergent enough, and that happens right in here, okay? Now the you've got very little momentum because you're already way above the yellow line and now it drops off again. And so there you have it. It's, it, it nothing happened to the trade. Now you get that spike down, okay? Both, both of the uh, CCX and the premium are changing right in here and you've got momentum building below the yellow line, up you go, go sideways a little bit, and then boom. Lack of momentum. Momentum didn't get you very far here. And then as it came down here, you were at a lower low in here. You're at a higher low over here. Now that can work. All right? Boom. So lower low here, higher low here. Okay. That low compared to this low, higher low. That, that's a divergence in the momentum and can work very well. Here, there's your momentum. It doesn't, doesn't take you very far. The CCX and the premium are both in agreement. And then as they turn, you get momentum in the opposite direction. Okay, those four ticks right, or four uh, bars right in there, going down, momentum. Now over here, you're below, this, below the uh, yellow line. Everything is going north, boom, you're going long, all right? So all you have to do is just look at these charts. Look for where the momentum is below the yellow line. Look at what the direction is according to the premium and the ticky. And you don't really need to worry that much about the overall trend. But keep in mind, all right, the zero line. Look at the zero line on the ES from here. Zero, below the zero below the zero, okay? You're shorting it, okay? This is dropping again toward going below the zero line. So yeah, that's pretty good indication. Yeah, you wanna be shorting this, if anything, in here. But now over here, you've got momentum above the zero line and long you go. Now, if you want to add the ashes to give you a little bit more perspective, we can do that.
Now, I don't know how this is going to look on a five second chart. Some of this might, or a three second chart might be a little fast. Let's see. Ashes do take a little bit to load because they've got to run a lot of calculations. All right, well, that could give you some perspective. So you may want to play with these. And the way you do that, you take your fastest ashy. Let's just get to a spot here. All right. All right. You see this long trend in here. This lasts for nearly an hour, a little bit more. You take your fastest ashy and you set it in such a way that it tries to line up with the lows to the extent possible. Now, that's a little hard to do when you've got. Uh, two ashes in here. Um, so let me let me solve that problem. Show you a little trick here. Now I'm gonna get rid of the five and just use the two. Okay. So you notice that the, the, the market is long and, and the ashy here is going up and it's coming down. You want it to just go up. Okay. So let's set this now to 300. See what happens. Set both of them to three. And we don't want to get much going in the opposite direction. So we've got a little bit in here, got a little bit in here, a little bit in there. Okay. So that might be okay. Let's take it up to five. See what the difference is. Yeah, that's a little better. Starts a little later. Okay. All right, so once you find the sweet spot where you're not getting much pullback during a long trend, and and you've got a little bit here, but that's okay. You just you don't you just don't want a lot of it. Then you go into multiples of that. So when I turn this off and I go back to my ashy five, Five hundred thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, and I'll take that up to five thousand.
Now, while that's cranking away, I have turned off the trading alchemy indicators. Given what you're doing, that's not going to help you. You really need oscillators, not divergence, for doing what you're doing. Just trading these, you know, two, three ticks, four ticks, trading divergence will drive you nuts. I, I, I can't see how that could be of any benefit at all. But trading the oscillators, yeah, that makes some sense. So when it comes to the, um, the TSC, for example, when you've got a trend here developing, waiting for the TSC to drop to its low, which it's doing right there, beautiful time, or right in here, beautiful time, when it's hitting the lows, those are great times to get in and go with the trend. And you know what the trend is just based on the ashes. Similarly, over here, you've got clear indication that we're in a downtrend. So you wait for these to, to hit their maximum. Okay. Now it's turning around, it's going the other way. So we got to wait till this. And then look at what's happening with the other indicators. So I wouldn't dismiss the TSC, but if you wanted a really safe trade, look for the trend, wait for it to drop to zero. Or, or, or pardon me, neg negative 100, pardon me. Okay. All right, so there's your workspace. I called it momentum. Give it a try, see what you think, let me know. And that's this video.